Hello, this is Oliver Blair from Massey University. I'm going to quickly give you an overview of Revit 2015 architecture. So when you first load it up, you can sort of see this is the default window. I'm just going to maximize it so it takes up my whole screen. You can sort of see there's um, you know, projects, families, and some examples sort of stuff here. And for me, this is the last sort of project I was working on, and also the last uh, family you're working on. So what we're going to do, just we'll start off making a new project. We'll go architectural template. So that's going to basically define all the all the sort of stuff that you begin with. For example, your floor plans, 3D views, elevations, etc. That's all coming from the um, architecture template. If you pick a different template, like the construction one, there'll be a whole bunch more stuff and. Uh, yeah, it's a bit harder to get started. Okay, so basically you can sort of see here is the um, the view of your design, whatever your, your view is in. And there's some tools at the top and some properties and things on the, on the side here as well. So you can sort of see um, right now we're in floor plans level one. And if I want to go to level two, I can just click on this, uh, double click on it. And also there's a site plan there, double click on that. There's nothing in my model right now, so it all sort of looks the same. Um, and you can sort of see there's 3D views, elevations as well in here. So this is kind of like our view um, browser over here as well. And um, up here, this is where all the properties are for what you've currently got selected. So if I select something else in my view, then um, all the properties sort of change to that. And if I so click away, like click on nothing, then nothing will be selected. And it's just whatever um, the default sort of settings are. Okay, so um, what's next? There's a whole bunch of stuff up the top here. This is a, uh, I think this is what sort of trips most people up, is um, the tools are sort of not all there all at the same time. Like with Revit, there's so much stuff that they've had to kind of um, put it in what's called a, a toolbar ribbon. So you can sort of see there's like tabs at the top. If I click on one of those tabs, all the different tools for that sort of area are there. And also, you can sort of see if I click on something like this grid, the tools sort of change depending on what you've got selected as well. So not just the properties, but also the tools can sort of change depending on the context yeah so this is called like a contextual menu so it's kind of tricky because things seem to be always changing all the time but when you understand okay it's what I'm what I'm selecting defines the options that come up then it starts to make a bit more sense okay so let's quickly just draw something so if we go to architecture we can go to wall so you can sort of see there's this little um, arrow underneath some of the options. That means that there's more stuff. If you click on that, then it'll show up the different sort of um, categories for that tool. <coughs> also, another really cool thing about Revit, if you hover over any of the tools, it comes up with that yellow tooltip, but then it expands, and some of them even start to draw, um, tell you how you can draw things as well, with little animations, which is pretty cool. So, all right, let's go back to our level one. And let's say we want to draw a wall. And you can sort of see straight away it started, um, the, the contextual menu is updated. Right now we're in modified place wall. And all these options now are based on how we're going to draw this wall. So you can sort of see, you can draw it as a line, or as a rectangle, or as an arc, and different sort of shapes, way to draw it. This one here, pick faces. So how that works, you can load uh, a massing model in, and then you can sort of select the faces to then turn it into walls. Really good if you want to bring something in from SketchUp, for example, like a simple SketchUp model. You can bring that in and then start to make it, uh, I, I sort of call it Revitify the model, and start to turn different faces into walls and things. Okay. So that's sort of how you can draw the wall, and then there's some options down here as well. 
So these are sort of like where you're going to place, where you're going to draw that wall. So you can sort of see how high it's going to be and the depth. So we'll leave it on height. And right now it's on unconnected, which gives us that um, numerical entry option. So we can just define, you know, it's going to be two and a half meters high. Another option, as you can see here, is you can select level two. And what that's going to do, it's going to draw it up to level two, no matter where level two is. So you can sort of come back later on and change the level heights and everything else will sort of adjust and adapt. I'll show you that now. I'll give you an example of it. And we'll go wall, center line. I want to actually draw it on the, the finished face of the exterior. So you can sort of see in this little diagram here, there is um, different layers to the wall. So there's an exterior or a cladding and an interior or I guess that would be where the insulation and the, and the framing is and then also the lining which is I guess like your jib or your um, plasterboard or whatever you're going to line your room with so the interior lining so let's do it by the exterior so the cladding and then chain means we can draw a multi-segment wall and then the offset so if we want to offset our wall from where we're drawing from <coughs> alright so let's just draw it you can sort of see I just clicked once and I can define where the end point of this wall segment will be and you can sort of see there's a the blue text there saying how long this wall is going to be and also I've got a um, an angle to show the angle that it's on from horizontal from this plane cool so say if I want it exactly 10 meters long I can just press tab and then type 10 thousand millimeters and press enter wax it in there for us and then this one I'll just draw some random uh, crazy wall cool and I can just go up there and when it when there's a little pink square let's click that and then it'll sort of chain it all together and now it's it's, um, it's closed cool so you can sort of see when I zoom in by default it looks like this you can kind of tell here's our exterior cladding and here's our interior lining great so I've got this wall and if I go to a different view for example 3d view great there's our wall and it's however high because if I go into elevation the level 2 is at 3 meters so if I want to change this can just drag this down because all the walls are set to end at level two they will shrink down as well so it's it's could be quite handy and it's kind of like a I guess a common thing with a lot of the tools in Revit things are, are linked and so if you set it up properly then you can save yourself a lot of time in the long run. Alright cool so that's great we've got our weird wall now what do we want to do we want to maybe cut a section out of it so if I go back to floor plan and then up the top here in all the our tools there's view so sections of type of view and it should be here somewhere there's all these options and then there's elevation and also section here as well so let's go section just hover over it and it'll tell us how to draw it what it is cool so I'll click here and uh, I'll set it going like that great so that's sort of made our section. We can sort of see which direction it's looking and what's going to be in that field of view of the section. And over here in your project view browser thing, there should be another area now. Sections. And I can double click on this. Section. Cool. Okay, great. So that's basically like a really quick overview. You can sort of see where all the views are, how to draw stuff. And um, I'll go into more depth. It's in my following videos about details, how to draw them, and also how to change the line weights or how to change the view and view templates and things like that. How to get it looking good. Because, for example, the section, you know, by default, looks kind of, kind of bad. Okay, great. Thanks very much.